name is Miss Becca and today you've tuned in for episode three of Kids on the Couch. We're so happy you're here and we have so much fun planned for you guys today. You know what, we may not be together right now, but we still have so many opportunities to connect. I have something called FaceTime with Friends and you guys can sign up with a link below. You can ask your mom or your dad to help you and you can get a FaceTime call from one of us. Without further ado, we're gonna start the episode. See you later. Hey guys, I'm so glad to see you here again this week. Are you ready for our riddle? It's kind of tricky, but I think you just might get it. Here we go. One sheet, two sheets, three sheets, or four. Some use less and some use more. What? am I? Hmm. What do you think it is? If you have an idea, put your guess down in the comments and we'll see who gets it right. You're so good at this. Toilet paper. It has one sheet, two sheet, three sheet, four. Some use less and some use more. Hopefully you're using a decent amount and not wasting it. But thanks for hanging out for our riddle today and we'll see you next week. Hi everybody, happy Easter week. I am so excited for our fun activity today. Are you excited? Yay! Okay, good. Do you wanna find out what it is? Let's do a drum roll, ready? We are making bouncy Easter eggs. That's right. We're gonna make our little Easter eggs turn into bouncy balls. Did you even know that was possible? It's gonna be awesome. Let's find out how to do it. Here are the supplies you're going to need for today's activity. Number one, you're gonna need a jar or a cup or whatever it is that you can fit both the vinegar and the egg in. So next thing you're gonna need is some white vinegar. Hopefully you have this around the house. Um, this is very important for our activity today. So it looks like water, but it's white vinegar. You also are going to need a raw egg. So that just means just a regular old egg. Mine's brown, it could be white, it can be whatever color your eggs are. And uh, you also can have food dye, but that's optional. So food dye is our last material that you'll wanna collect from around your house before we get started. And again, it's optional, it's really messy. So make sure you ask your mom and dad if it's okay if you use food dye because it can stain your clothes and can get really messy really fast. So we wanna be really careful when we use this. All right, you guys, ready for step one? The first step is pouring the white vinegar into your jar, so easy. You wanna pour it up high enough so that uh, it will cover the egg when you put the egg in. Like that. Step two is optional. If you'd like to put food dye in to color your egg, you can. Remember, don't forget to ask your mom and dad if that's okay, because it is really messy, don't forget. You'll only put one or two drops in and that will color your vinegar so it's all ready to put your egg in. All right, friends, you might wanna go grab a spoon for step three. It might make it a little easier. So I grabbed a spoon and now step three, you're gonna place the egg in the spoon, grab your jar with white vinegar and you're going to gently put that egg into the jar of white vinegar, just like that. Step four is the hardest one because it's gonna take a lot of patience. We are gonna wash this egg and let it sit here for two days. That's right, two days. And at the end of those two days, we are gonna have a bouncy egg. Luckily, I already did this activity, so I already waited two days. So it's been two days and we're gonna find out how these eggs turn out and if they really did turn into bouncy Easter eggs. It looks like there's a bit of film on the top and I think that's from the shell coming off. Let me show you. Yep, that's the shell coming off. It looks kind of gross. So since this might be a little bit messy, we're gonna take it to the kitchen. All right, so since your bouncy egg might get a little messy and eventually it could break and get all over the place, 
We want to make sure it's in a place that's easy to clean up. So let's bring our bouncy eggs when they're done after two days to the sink in the kitchen and test out our bouncy egg right there at the sink, maybe on the counter next to the sink. So it's going to be an easy thing to clean up once it makes a mess. I'm going to use a spoon to get my bouncy egg out, especially since the one with food dye would stain my fingers and my clothes. So grab a spoon. I'm going to take out the film. Ooh, it's kind of gross and slimy. Let's see. How did this turn out? Whoa. <laughs> That's cool. I'm going to run some water over it. Okay, so I rinsed off my egg number one and we're gonna see if it bounces. Oh, it's really squishy. <laughs> All right, ready? Let's see if it bounces. One, two, three. It totally does bounce. That is cool. And you know what? It is making a mess. So make sure when we're done, we always clean up our mess. All right, here's egg number two that didn't have any food coloring in it. Mine was brown, so it looks a little yellow, but it's squishy too. Let's see if it bounces. It's bouncy. <laughs> That's so cool. And I wanted to show you guys one more trick. Okay, I found out something cool. If you shine a light through the egg, you can actually see the yolk still. Well, this light might be too bright. Let's see. Oh, can you see it? There's the yolk. And it moves around. Oh, whoa, the yolk is still in there. That's cool. Well, that's it for kids on the couch with our fun activity. We made some bouncy eggs for Easter. And if you made bouncy eggs in the next two days, please send us a picture. We'd love to see how they turned out. And if you want to send us a picture, you can send it to kids at vintagegrace.org or you could tag us on Instagram at vintagekidsedh. All right, that's all for our fun activity. See you guys next week. Hi guys, I hope you've had fun today on Kids on the Couch. I have a totally different thing that I wanna to do today. I know that we're getting close to Easter and we talked last week that it's not about the Easter money or Easter eggs, but it's about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross and that he saved us from all our bad choices because God said, somebody's gotta pay for these bad choices and Jesus was willing to do it. But today I wanna to read you a different story. It's called The Tale of Three Trees. Let me do this. If you are in third, fourth, or fifth grade, I want to know if you can guess the ending to this as I read it. And if you can, have your parents write it in the comments. If you do, I'll give you each 50 tribbles. So we're going to read this book and let's see um, just exactly how God is put in everything. That he made everything, that he's knit everything, that he's in everything. So here we go. The Tale of Three Trees. And I'll try to show you the photos as I go. Once upon a mountaintop, three trees dreamed of what they wanted to become when they grew up. I want to hold treasure, the first tree said. I will be the most beautiful treasure chest in the entire world. I want to be strong sailing ship, the second tree said. I will be the strongest ship in the whole world. I don't want to leave this mountaintop at all, the third tree said. I want to grow so tall that when people look at me, they will raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. One day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. With a swoop of the first man's axe, the first tree fell. With a swish of the second man's axe, the second tree fell. And with a slash of the third man's axe, the third tree fell. The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to a carpenter shop, but the busy carpenter was not thinking about treasure chests. Instead, his work-worn hands fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The second tree smiled when the woodcutter took him to a shipyard, but no mighty sailing ships were built that day. Instead, the once strong tree was made into a simple fishing boat. 
The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and left her in the lumber yard. What happened? The once tall tree wondered. All I ever wanted to do was point to God. Many, many days and nights passed and the three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby into the feed box. And suddenly the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure of the world. Woo. One evening, a, tiled tra a tired traveler and his friends crowded into the old fishing boat. When a storm arose, the second tree shuddered, but then the traveler stretched out his hands and said, peace, and the storm stopped. And suddenly, the second tree knew he was carrying the king of heaven and of earth. And one Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the wood pile. She shivered when she was dragged through an angry crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew God's love had changed everything. It had made the first tree beautiful. It had made the second tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. That was better than being the tallest tree in the whole world. I love that God used the trees and the people and the place and the earthquake and the world and the sun and he uses everything and he points us back to himself. So this Sunday, as you celebrate Easter, would you just talk to your family and be reminded that God saved you, that Jesus paid for all of your bad choices and that you are deeply, deeply, deeply loved. Happy Easter, friends. Hey everyone, I have a couple of announcements for you. Did you know that on Saturdays at 7 p.m. we have another program for you? That's right. We launched our bedtime series last Saturday evening when I got to share my family's favorite bedtime story, Pow Pow Fish. Tune in again this Saturday at 7 for another bedtime story read by a kids team member. Next, have you signed up for FaceTime with friends? If you haven't, ask your parent to go on and choose a time slot where a kids team member can either FaceTime or Zoom you so we get to actually see your faces. We really miss you and would love a chance to connect with you. Last, don't forget we have Sunday curriculum still online. Watch our lesson video, print out the activity pages, do some fun activities with your family. We just want you to have a chance to connect with Jesus with your family at home. Bonus though, if you take a picture, post it on Facebook or email it to us because we would love to add triples to that jar and get a party when we come back together. We really miss you guys. Hope you've had a wonderful week. Maybe you've joined us at our drive through Easter egg hunt. It's not too late if you haven't gone yet though. It goes through tomorrow at sunset. So make sure you go to church and participate because it's super fun. We hope you have a wonderful Easter and we can't wait to see you guys again soon. Bye.